Hello guys, welcome to Silver Screen Recap Hub. Today I will show you the recap of the movie called The Indewetchables, released in 2021. Driss is driving Philippe, who works for him, around Paris late at night. When waiting in traffic gets too boring, Driss breaks the speed limit and starts driving very fast, dodging other cars and not caring about traffic signs. This makes the police go after him, and Driss bets 100 euros that he can beat them. However, after he drives under a bridge, the police ambush him from both sides and catch up with him. Driss doesn't seem too worried, and this time he bets 200 euros that he can get them an escort. When the police tell him to get out of the car, he acts like he's offended and says Philippe can't move and he's taking him to the hospital. When the officers approach Philippe, they witness him convulsing, which is also an act, and they also discover the wheelchair inside the trunk as evidence. The police volunteer themselves as Driss escorts to the hospital and excuse him for exceeding the speed limit because it is an emergency. Driss plays September by earth, wind, and fire to celebrate winning the bet, and when they get to their destination, he smokes with Philippe as soon as the police leave. Driss says he'll take care of it and drives them away just as the hospital staff is about to find them. This friendship has been going on for a long time. Going back to the earlier part of the movie, Philippe and his assistant Magali are holding interviews to find a new caretaker for him. But it's not going too well because all of the applicants answers to the interview questions are either very standard or awkward. But they are surprised when Driss rushes in, even though it isn't his turn yet, because all he wants is for them to sign a paper saying they won't hire him so he can get unemployment benefits. He is blunt and a little rude, and he even flirts with Magali, but Philippe finds him funny and tells him to come back the next day to sign his papers. Driss goes back to his humble neighborhood home and tries to take a bath while his younger siblings bother him. His older and more responsible sister Mina is the only one who helps him get it done on time. He looks out the window while waiting for their mother and sees his brother Adama getting out of a strange car. When the boy comes into the apartment, he just says he's at school and leaves after getting his bag. This makes Driss even more sure that he's up to something. When his mother comes home in the evening, he gives her a stolen Fabergé egg and tells her he's been on vacation. She isn't happy to see him, though, because he disappeared for six months and never called and now he just showed up at her house as if it were a hotel. She has had enough of his lies and has to take care of her other kids, so she throws him out and tells him not to come back. Driss hangs out with some neighbors all night, smoking and eating snacks. The next day, Driss goes back to Philippe's house to get his papers. He is met by the housekeeper, Yvonne, who shows him around and tells him about Philippe's daily routine. She also shows him the room he would get with its own bathroom. Driss can't stop looking at the bathtub until Philippe drags him to see him. Philippe gives Driss a signed piece of paper and a chance to get a job. Driss agrees to the one-month trial, and Philippe tells him he's willing to bet that he won't make it through two weeks. Driss is taught how to take care of Philippe after he puts his things in his room. He needs to learn how to keep his legs moving, put him in a wheelchair, and help him take a shower and get dressed. Things get awkward when Driss finds out he has to put on Philippe's high stockings and clean his butt after he goes to the bathroom. But no matter how much he complains and says he won't do these jobs, he ends up doing them anyway because they are part of his job. Later that night, he was having a snack on the roof when Philippe's daughter Elisa and her boyfriend Bastian came up looking for a private place to kiss. He kicked them out because he wouldn't share his beer with them. Driss gets used to Philippe's daily routine quickly, even if he makes some mistakes at first that he learns from, like giving Philippe the phone instead of putting it to his ear or forgetting the baby monitor while taking a bath. He also learns how to sort his mail into different folders. Most of the letters he opens for Philippe, but he can't look at a few private ones. When he finds a flyer advertising female escorts, he decides to keep it instead of throwing it away, as Philippe suggests. Driss still makes sure to have fun in his new life. He keeps trying to get Magali's attention, but to no avail, and sometimes calls escorts to join him in bed. After Yvonne scolds him for being late one morning, she goes to his room and finds some dangerous weapons in his bag. She doesn't say anything about them yet. Driss's job for the day is to drive Philippe around, but he won't put him in the back of a van like he's cargo. Instead, he takes him in one of the fancy cars that doesn't get much use. Philippe says at first that this isn't a good idea and that they should be practical, but he soon starts to like the idea of a faster, less boring ride, even though Yvonne still doesn't like it. When they try to leave the building, a neighbor parks in front of their door, even though a sign says it's not allowed. Driss goes after the man right away and grabs him by the front of his shirt. He then threatens him until he moves the car. Philippe likes what he does, but Yvonne, once again, doesn't like it. Philippe wants to buy a piece of art at a museum, but Driss doesn't think it's worth the money because it's just a red spot on a canvas. 
Philippe then talks to one of his relatives, who tells him that everyone is worried about Driss because he can be violent. Philippe doesn't care that he has a criminal record. He likes Driss because he doesn't feel sorry for him and doesn't mind joking around with him. Driss has dinner with Yvonne in the kitchen while Philippe dictates a letter to Magali. This is after he tries again to get Magali's attention but fails. Yvonne turns off the baby monitor and says it's a private conversation. Then she tells what's going on. Philippe writes letters to a woman named Eleanor. Those are the letters he didn't let Driss open. But he has never met Eleanor in person, their only connection is through letters. When they talk about love, Driss makes fun of Yvonne for the way the gardener always looks at her before bed. He is trying to sleep when he hears strange sounds coming from the baby monitor. Philippe is having trouble breathing. Driss can't ignore him no matter how hard he tries, so he goes to his room and calms him down with soothing words and a wet cloth to wipe his face. Philippe finally falls asleep, but when he wakes up a few minutes later, he says he needs air. Driss doesn't think twice this time. He puts Philippe in the wheelchair, wraps him in blankets, and takes him for a walk along the river. Philippe hasn't seen Paris at night in a long time. Now that he's more relaxed, he tells Driss that the medicine can only do so much and that he sometimes feels pain from where his arm used to be. Philippe also says, when they see some girls walking by, that he can't please a woman because of his situation, but he can still feel good when someone massages his ears, which are sensitive spots. When the pain starts to feel like it might come back, Driss gives Philippe one of his joints. Philippe is skeptical at first, but he ends up loving it. After that, they go to a restaurant and have a meal together, where they joke around, and Philippe tells more of his story. He met his wife when they were both students. Soon after they married, she had five miscarriages and was told she had a disease that couldn't be cured and would kill her. That's when they decided to adopt Elisa. Philippe has always loved competitions, extreme sports, and speed, and a paraglider gave him all of those things. He broke his vertebrae when he crashed while paragliding because of bad weather. However, he still thinks that his real handicap isn't the chair but living without his wife. After more joking around, Philippe remembers the date and realizes that Driss has passed his one-month trial and is now officially hired. But he should start by giving back the Fabergé egg he stole because it was a gift from his wife. She gave him one every year, so he has exactly 25 of them, which is the same number of years they were married. The next day, Driss sees Mina as she leaves school. She's annoyed that he hasn't been answering her messages except to ask her to look for the egg. She also tells him that the police have been calling their house. Then he goes to see Adama, who tells him he was found with 30 grams on him. Driss wants to take him to lunch, but Adama says no and instead gets into the same suspicious car he was in before. Later, Driss is allowed to be there while Philippe tells Magali what to write in his letter to Eleanor. He thinks Philippe's flowery language is boring and that he should be more direct. He's also surprised to hear they've been talking for six months but haven't shared any photos. When he sees her phone number on one of the letters, he takes it as a sign and calls her. Philippe has to pick up the phone and talk to her for the first time in person. Their conversation goes so well that Philippe now talks to her on the phone all the time, even right before he and Driss go to the opera, where Driss laughs at the costumes and makes fun of them. The next day, Driss talks Philippe into trading pictures with Eleanor. He chooses a picture of Philippe in a wheelchair. Elisa comes into his room while he is painting to ask for cigarettes and makes fun of him for trying to be creative. When he gets angry, he kicks her out and then goes to see Philippe, who is asking Yvonne to change the picture to one of him when he wasn't in a wheelchair. She puts the picture in the escort file right before Driss comes in to complain about Elisa and tells Philippe that he needs to punish her, which Yvonne agrees with. Philippe agrees to talk to her, but he's mostly surprised when Driss tells her he's been painting. The days keep going by, and Philippe and Driss' friendship keeps getting stronger. Philippe buys Driss's first suit and scolds his daughter while Driss listens to him through the baby monitor. When Driss is done with his first painting, he shows it to Magali. When he tries to kiss her, she slaps him. On the other hand, Philippe says he'll try to sell the painting because he likes it. They have a lot of fun together, like getting a faster car, smoking together, and even hiring escorts. Philippe doesn't get too excited about his birthday. Every year, he acts surprised when they tell him they're having a party and has to meet all his relatives who only come to see him on that day to make sure he's still alive. Philippe thinks it will all be pretty dull. Driss looks for Elisa while he and the other guests listen to classical music. Elisa is crying in her room because she took some of Yvonne's pills, which didn't kill her as she thought they would. Bastian breaks up with her and calls her a tart, which makes her sad. She asks Driss to talk to Bastian, which he agrees to do for a price. Philippe shows his relative the painting Driss made, and his relative agrees to buy it for 11,000 euros. Driss goes back to the dining room and talks to Yvonne. 
Yvonne tells Driss that Magali is dating a man named Fred but that things aren't going so well right now. This gives Driss hope. Philippe makes Driss listen to some of the most important songs in classical music history as the party winds down, but Driss can only laugh. After the band is done, he brings his iPod and plays Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind and Fire before dancing in the middle of the floor. He is a great dancer and gets everyone else at the party to dance with him, which Philippe likes to watch. Later, when Driss is putting Philippe to bed, he reads the latest letter from Eleanor to him. She sent him a picture of herself that showed how pretty she is, and she told him that they should meet up next week when she went to Paris. When the date day comes, Yvonne and Driss try on dozens of outfits on Philippe until they find the right one. Since Yvonne will take Philippe on the date, Driss uses his day off to go see Bastien and threatens him until he agrees to apologize to Eliza and bring her croissants every day. He also asks Bastien to fix his hair. After that, he goes to see his mom at work, but all he can do is watch her from a distance. Yvonne and Philippe are waiting at the restaurant for Eleanor, who is very late. Philippe gives up waiting after an hour, calls Driss to ask him to take him home, and then leaves the restaurant without noticing that Eleanor is coming in at the same time. That same night, Philippe takes Driss with him in his private plane and gives him the money he got from selling the picture, which makes him very happy. The next morning, when they wake up in the country, Philippe decides to go paragliding and drags Driss along with him. Driss doesn't want to have anything to do with it, but after he freaks out at first, he ends up enjoying it. When they get back home, Adama is waiting for Driss. When he sees the scars on Adama's face, he scolds him. Adama still won't tell Driss what's going on in his life, so Driss makes him wait in his room while he tells Mina not to worry and puts Philippe to bed. Philippe, on the other hand, isn't tired yet. After making Driss look at a painting with him, he asks about his family. Driss doesn't want to talk about his family at first, but in the end, he does. Adama isn't really his brother, and neither are his parents. Instead, they are his aunt and uncle. They brought him from Senegal when he was eight because they couldn't have children. His real name is Bakari Basari, but because other kids had the same name, they called him Idris, which became Driss. One day, his aunt got pregnant by some miracle, and after his uncle died, there were other men and even more children. In the same way, Driss had told him about Elisa, Philippe tells him that Adama needs discipline, so he fires Driss so he can be with his family and not spend his whole life taking care of an old man. After Bastien brings his daily croissant and fixes his hair the next morning, Driss packs his bags and gets ready to leave. Magali comes to say goodbye, and when Driss tries to hit on her one last time, she introduces him to his girlfriend Fred, which is short for Frederic. It turns out Magali isn't interested in men, so Driss gives up on the spot. On his way out of the house, he gives the baby monitor back to Yvonne and makes fun of her for lying to him about Magali just to mess with him. In exchange, she gives him the escort file he had started, but the picture he had chosen is hidden inside. Driss gets rid of the file, but he keeps the photo. Once he gets outside, he finds a car blocking the entrance again, so he asks the driver to move even though he no longer works there. Driss says it's a matter of principle when Adama calls him out on it. After a few hours, the two brothers go to the train station to pick up their mother. Back at the house, Philippe is having his first dinner with his new caretaker. The caretaker is stuffy and dull, so Philippe decides not to eat with him. Since Yvonne is out with the gardener on a date, nobody is around to tell him off. As time goes on, Driss returns to how he used to live. He starts hanging out with his old friends again and tells the guys in the strange car to stop bothering Adama. When he goes to an interview where he doesn't have enough experience, he manages to get the job by calling himself pragmatic and using all the art knowledge he learned while working for Philippe. He gets a job as a driver because of this. Philippe still doesn't like his new caretaker, and he stays in a bad mood all the time. One night, he won't let anyone in the house help him with his pain, so Yvonne calls Driss and asks him to come over. So, that's how they got into this situation in the first place, with the police chasing after them and then taking them to the hospital. After that little adventure, Driss takes Philippe to the coast, where he can see the sea and feel better. Later, Driss trims Philippe's long beard before taking him to a restaurant for lunch. He doesn't stay, because Philippe will have someone else to talk to today. Driss wishes him luck and finally gives him back his egg before leaving. Philippe worries about being alone until he sees who his date is, Eleanor, who is happy to see him and doesn't mind the chair at all. The movie end here, thank you for watching. Take care and stay healthy.